special project here today uh, what we're getting ready to do is we're going to work on this c63 amg and what we're doing is we're going to do a big break conversion on this we're keeping these same calipers and we got these brackets so this will get unbolted and this will fit in its place, which will extend the brake caliper out just a little bit in order to fit these nice two piece rotors from black series on to this. This is a 507 series. And uh, so this is what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna get these rotors off Take that caliper free and um, swap the parts over, clean everything up, put them on, and uh, let's see how they look. So we're going to get started here in just one second on this. Car is sitting on jack stands all the way around. I know, I know, the jack stands don't match. And, uh, but at least they have a theme. You know, we have orange and green, so we're, we're almost like Halloween. And, uh, you know, that's fine. They're gonna look fine. Uh, and at least they're, they're not Harbor Freight jack stands, so they're not gonna collapse. And, uh, but I think they got that taken care of now. I think that was just a, a little hiccup with some of the parts. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and move on and uh, get these brakes off the car and get the new brakes on the car. So what we have to do is unbolt this caliper from its existing bracket, take that bracket from the vehicle, mount this one on it, and mount the caliper back onto this. So these are from a German company. I forget which one it is. I didn't purchase them myself. My, uh, my customer found them, sourced them, got them, and had them sent to me. But we do have a name here on it. And uh, I will put the name of it in here during editing whenever we get ready to put this all together. So this is them. This will go on and help this rotor or not this rotor, this caliper fit on this larger rotor. So let me go ahead and get these taken apart and we're gonna switch over to a time lapse and get these taken off. And then we're gonna move on and start getting the bits put back on that need to be on. So let me switch this over. We'll get some parts taken off and get going on this. So when we got that rotor off, so here's our original rotor next to our new rotor. And we can see there is a pretty substantial size difference. So the next thing I have to do, just got this sitting up here for right now, is to go ahead and remove this bracket and replace it with this bracket. And this bracket will just add a little bit of distance from here out. So as you can see, it, it kind of fits in the same way and it's got this offset behind it where the uh, bolt hole needs to be. So it just has extra meat on it to keep it from 
becoming damaged. So now we're going to take out these two bolts and install this in its place. So these are a 21 millimeter bolt head. The two bolts that hold the caliper on are 10 millimeter Allens. If you're like mine, then you're gonna have to use a hammer because they've been repainted. And uh, they were very snug. Alright, so we're gonna have to break out the big the big bar to be able to take these bolts out because they are very tight. And uh, that does it. <laughs> Broke the tool. Busted it right in half. So, I guess we've reached the stopping point for right now. Now we're going to go ahead and take that other bolt out. Using the proper socket. Well, the proper size drive anyway. It is a flip socket. Most people doing wheels and tires, but at least it's half inch drive. So it's going to allow me to take it loose. <clears throat> but it is very, very tight. So we just got to set that up there for right now and just get it out of the way because the bungee cord I have, I don't trust and I don't want to stretch this brake line out. drop that bracket out and we're going to put these two brackets side by side so we can see the difference there so we're going to be pushing those calipers out good 10 to 15 mil these are kind of the only hardware so when we put this back together We're going to be using their hardware that they provided. But right now, we're just going to do a loose fit and just make sure everything fits up like it should and nothing rubs. Because I want to put this together with some red Loctite, which I don't have here with me right now. those come through just a little 
and they are, I believe, no, they are the same thread pitch. And what I want to see is if this bolt protrudes any at all. If it doesn't, then we're going to go ahead and use these. probably going to come right to the very very edge so we're going to look at this and if it does come right to the edge we're going to go ahead and use the standard mercedes bolts instead of these other ones now we are going to use the new bolts for the caliper but i don't like the idea of that bolt sticking through We can see that is right to the edge so i'm going to back this off just enough to be able to get the other bolt out where it's just a little loose go ahead and take this out Now we can come up with some washers for those and space them out just a little bit. Now it doesn't have any washers in the box, but we might come up with some for tomorrow. So there those are just kind of snugged up. I'm going to get this. Moved over to the side for just a minute. Go ahead and hang this for just a second while we uh, set the rotor on. Again, I don't trust this enough to let it hang permanently. But for a brief period of time, I'm okay with it. Now, because this is a multi-piston caliper, we should be able to just use a bit of a pry bar, kind of smash the piston in just a hair. Enough to get my rotor to just to sit on there for just a minute. Because really that's all I need. It's just a minute to be able to test it. So hopefully that's enough. But so far it doesn't quite seem to be. Now, again, since we're just trying to test it, all we're going to do is just set it on here with the stock bolts.
we're gonna just look at the fitment of it. So we wanna make sure, since we're adapting brakes, that everything fits fine. So this is it. This is how it's going to look. So let's move over to here. And this is our new brakes. This is how it's going to be. This is what it's going to look like. Now, again, these are the same AMG calipers same hubs the only difference is we added a different caliper bracket in order to get these rotors to fit now i believe these are black series rotors non-carbon ceramic but still two-piece and uh, from what i understand they're actually cheaper than the 507 series rotors so getting that bracket actually saves you money maybe not right off the bat but they do so this is what they look like and uh, we're going to continue on and do more to this video because this is more than just brakes and we'll get to this later okay so the next thing that we have to do now that we've got our rotors on we've got our bracket in place now we have to go ahead and tighten up the bracket that holds the caliper so these things are incredibly tight so we're going to go back and make them incredibly tight once again <clears throat> so those are on all the way the next thing Be to grab our new caliper bolts. Mm -mm. In this case, we're going to go ahead and reuse the old ones for one reason the new ones have smaller heads and they don't have the washers. I feel better about having the washers on there and these are not one-time use bolts so I'm okay with this. So the next thing I'm going to do is get this wire bracket out of the caliper so I can compress the pistons. back and prop this piston spreader in there this is one that I picked up from my local JTC distributor And I think it works great. It does everything that I need it to do. So, those are put in. Now we will set 
our caliper back in place. Take our bolts. Once we get these all the way in, then we can go ahead and swap out the brake pads. And then we'll move on to the other side. And then once the other side's done, then we're gonna move on to the rear. So that's in. So now this is our new caliper, not caliper, caliper is the same old caliper with new brackets and larger diameter rotors. Now this is on a C63. It's the 507, I believe, 507 series, which is just one step under a black series. Still a very nice car either way. Now the next thing is to swap out the brake pads. So while I sit here and dig my way through my tools, um, we'll go ahead and get this part. Now, just like every other time since I'm doing this away from my my own tools at my shop. I inevitably forget to bring home something and have to work around. This time, I forgot to bring home a punch to pop out the uh, caliper pins. So we'll have to come up with a different solution for that. But this one part will be easy. This is the pin that goes in the middle of the caliper that kind of holds down all the parts. Now the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and pop these pins out. Usually you'd need like a punch, but since we don't have that, we're going to use a little, little screwdriver and a hammer.
Actually, it's going to be even better than that. It's a, a little Torx bit and a hammer. So, let's get this lined up on the end. Okay, so those are out. So the next thing is just kind of push down the uh, the spring that holds this stuff in, and then pull the pins by hand the rest of the way out. These can be kind of tricky sometimes <clears throat> because they get a little dirt debris built up on them, and that makes them difficult to remove. But typically, once you get the first one all the way out, the other one just slides right out, right behind it. So, there's our first pin. Second pin. just slide out right behind it. Once those pins are out, then we can pull our brake pads. <clears throat> and once the brake pads are out, then we can slide the new brake pads in. Now the first thing I want to do is make sure that my pistons are all in all the way nice and even. We have new hardware. Along with our new brake pads. So, sometimes you'll find the brake pads are directional. These do not appear to be. So, we're gonna go ahead and drop in the outboard pad. that's in and kind of lined up then I'll make sure the inboard pad has been compressed all the way so I can get it out of the out of the caliper <coughs> Sometimes you may have to adjust these pistons just a little, just in case one of them didn't push all the way back in because this is a six piston caliper. And having six pistons, you got, well, more pistons to have to worry about. Tap that all the way in, make sure it's nice and straight. We'll get our new hardware. Pull two of our pins out. And one clip. Slide this in part way and get it around the little spring bracket. Once that's in, We'll drive that first pin, pin in, then get onto the second pin. Let 
So this might require a little bit of extra help from a second person if you if you have to. But most of the time you can get it in by yourself just, just fine. But sometimes these new springs can be kind of tight. So if you're having trouble getting it in and you have a second set of hands, it's okay to have somebody else tap these in for you. While you hold the spring. Now, I got them in. Now we'll put this pin back in and bolt it back up. Now this doesn't have to be really, really tight because as you see, I'm using a quarter inch ratchet to put it in with. All right, so that's that. The final thing you're gonna have to do is put in your brake wear indicator. So you should have gotten a new one with all your brake parts. didn't and your old ones are still okay it is okay to reuse them if you can get them to pull back out without breaking so here's our old one and it doesn't have any wear on it so far so we're going to take our flat tip and gently twist on this and slide this thing out. And so that came out without damage. So now we'll equally gently slide it back in and then grab our connector and go ahead and plug that back in. That has one bolt that fixes it to the caliper, which we'll grab that and put that back in. And then this side will be completed. I've got probably the worst possible tool for this because I didn't bring home some of the other tools I needed, but that's what I'm going to use. Okay, so here we are. We have just completed doing this front right uh, brake caliper and rotor, well, brake caliper bracket and rotor upgrade. So we went from the standard size 507 series rotor to this black series rotor, and it's a two piece. 
and uh, so it fits just fine. You just have to change the caliper bracket to a little bit larger uh, bracket and get the caliper out just a little bit further, about a few, uh, five to 10 mil. So you may have noticed, uh, I've mentioned on here a few times that I didn't bring home the right tool, but you see, I continue with what I'm doing because sometimes you just have to adapt and overcome the having a more proper tool for this job. Sometimes there's a better tool out there to do this that makes everything easier. You don't necessarily have to have, but it does help greatly to have it. So that was it. Anyway, we'll get back to the video. So now we're working on the back half. We're doing the rear brakes on this C63. Uh, I've already broken loose the two bolts to hold the caliper on. They're 18 millimeter. So that's taken loose. And now I'm just gonna loosen the bolts, remove them. And then we'll get the drum slash rotor off and replace the brake pads in this and then the brake shoes inside the drum. Now this being a job I'm doing at home, I had to bring tools with me. And, well, I just didn't bring all the right ones, which is pretty common. You always forget at least one tool unless you have two full sets. Anytime you're working away from your main shop, you're always going to find yourself out of something. So you had to work around it or stop what you're doing and go back to your shop and pick up what you need. So if you're doing mobile work, it's really good to learn to overcome things you're missing and how to work around that. doing this as like a, a mobile or a side business of your main shop business will make you have to do things that you wouldn't normally do because you're going to have to adapt and overcome on a lot of things that you don't have the parts for you don't have the tools for and you're going to have to figure out a way to do it because you said you would So once you lock yourself into doing something, you have to do it. So you have to figure out a way to get done what you said you would. Because of the low clearance here, I wish I had brought home W18 ratchet wrench because I would have a lot more swing and would be able to get in here and just get this loose and out without having to take the wrench off every single time and go back just a few few notches. Just having less than a quarter turn for swing makes it difficult so 
of this because it's a very light caliper. We're just going to let it hang right here momentarily. And then get this out of the way. So what I'm about to do right here is I'm going to be hitting the rotor with a hammer in order to break loose the bond the rust has created between the rotor and the hub circuit. Now if you're going to reuse your rotor, you're just going in to replace something internally in that drum, you want to make sure that you're being careful to not hit the brake disc surface and only hit on the, the part that the wheel contacts. Uh, if you're not going to reuse the rotor, then hit it wherever you want and, you know, get the rust broke loose. Tap it a few times all the way around the brake surface. It's fine. It's not going to matter. But if you're going to reuse it, don't hit the brake surface. Well, sometimes you get rotors like this that get stuck real good and you have to hit them kind of hard. let them pop loose. Now here's the whole problem. So this is missing the hold down tab. So that's why this break was causing issues. All right, so here is our, our new brake shoes. One of the things that used to be a thing is looking at your brake shoes to make sure you don't have a long shoe and a short shoe because that used to be a difference. But all four of these shoes all have the same length of pad material on them. So we don't have to worry about that. Now the next thing we do have to do is get behind this uh, hub and get the springs loose. That's where these come in handy. have to have the brake spring pliers to get behind the brake spring and even then sometimes it can be quite difficult because the, um, the brake springs are usually very tight and very tightly placed in the around the shoe. So when you're doing these, they can sometimes be very difficult. Now sometimes you'll have something like this where you have your little star wheel adjuster on the bottom side and you have to spread them out just a little to get your star adjuster out. Star wheel adjuster out of there, it'll help you release the other spring on the back side, which can be beneficial to getting the other spring loose. So now that that's out of there, we can push these two together enough to grab a pair of pliers, although these may not be the best ones for the job. They are all I have here right now. So the next thing I'm going to use is a trim tool to reach in and push the spring out of place on the one. So now that I can lift this up, now I can use 
my brake spring pliers again and should be able to get behind the other spring. Should be able to. Now, like I said, it can be kind of a pain sometimes to get the springs out. And they require a little bit of effort. Especially true on these newer cars that have very small parking brakes with that same setup. Because you need to have room to be able to get to the brake springs. And when you're playing and just big in front of the springs, it can make it very hard. something a little bit different here. Let's see if I can get my trim wedge behind it. At least enough to help insert the brake spring pliers in behind the spring. Okay, you see that? Looks like that might have helped.
All right, so this is the spring that holds the brakes down. I don't have a special tool for this. I can't hardly get to it with a pair of pliers. So I used my trim tool to slide inside, press straight down and twist, it pops out. All right, so we got our one hold down spring in here. We're leaving this one loose for right now so I can go ahead and put this piece in And we're going to use a brake spring tool to hold down the brake shoe enough to drop this in. So we got that in there. So what we want to do is try to center this up to where our brake springs are kind of in the right place. Take our lower brake spring, which we really can't even see. Grab our needle nose pliers. Clearly this would have been far easier if I would have put the car in neutral instead of leaving it in park. But I didn't want to leave the key on to have the car in neutral. So I just worked around the hub. That made it a little more difficult for me, but it was still doable. It just took a little Could bit more effort and a little bit more that. time. And at least on this one, I can kind of see the hole that it has to go into. And there, it's in. So, now, our brake shoes are on. New hardware. New brake adjuster. So the next thing we have to do is slip the drum on and turn it and it should be a little bit of drag. If it doesn't, then we gotta slide the drum back off and adjust this slightly until we have just a little bit of drag from the shoes. It's really all you want. And to me, I feel like I could probably turn it just a couple notches and it would be fine. So not that much. Okay, so that right there is about where I want it. So then we'll go ahead and put this T30 back in place. That should be good right there. And then we'll put new pads in, set the caliper back on, and the rears are done. So this has been doing brakes on a C63 AMG, including the brake shoes for your parking brake. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. We do have some more videos on this particular car parts of brakes go to consider it done the last part is to set the caliper back on and that part if you got this far you should be able to figure that one out anyway thanks for watching